Uh, any... Okay, uh, cool. so they didn't hear the positive stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, the lecture is going to be, uh, oh, I didn't write that. Mainly joint work with Robin Tucker Drob. Uh, so uh, Robin Tucker Drob, uh, sorry. Um, uh, but also some in the very end, I'll mention joint work with uh, Ronnie Chen and Greg Zerlov. And uh, Greg, this if time permits. But the main uh, main uh, lectures are going to be based uh, on the work with Tucker Group. Okay, so these lectures are going to concern non-amenability of measure class preserving. Uh, equivalence relations, countable Borel equivalence relations, so very small groups, uh, unlike in Fodor's group talk. Uh, and uh, mostly we will be concerned with uh, these equivalence relations that are trivial, so they admit the structure of a tree on every class. So I'll start with the, the sort of the, the point of the series is to uh, mainly to characterize which ones among the trivial ones are amenable. And there is this characterization in the measure preserving setting. And our main result is that we find the characterization in the uh, quasi measure preserving setting, in the setting where only null sets are preserved, but the measure changes. Okay, so uh, I'm going, I think that today's lecture mostly is going to consist of like defining every term in blue appearing in the first two lines. Uh, and so I apologize, it's going to be equally painful for those who know and to those who don't know, because I'm going to go fast. So it's a, it's a phrase I stole from Benji Weiss. Okay, so uh, we start with um, uh, measure class preserving C bears, we call them. So uh, measure class of class preserving, which I'm going to call MCP, C bears. Uh, I will not write what C bears are. I already said countable Borel equivalence relations here. OK, so um, what are these things? First of all, an equivalence relation, an equivalence relation E on a standard Borel space, standard Borel space X. Say uh, you can think of X uh, as the reals or the zero one interval. Okay, X um, is called countable Borel equivalence relation. So uh, it's called a uh, C bear. If uh, if each E class is countable, and E is a set of pairs, it's the pairs that are equivalent to each other, and as a set of pairs, it's a Borel subset of X squared, and E is a Borel subset of X squared. Okay, so uh, let me immediately steal a diagram from here. Um, where do uh, C bears arise? Well, they arise from uh, Borel actions of countable groups as their orbit equivalence relations. Okay, so um, if you have a Borel action of a countable group and consider its orbit equivalence relation, each orbit is countable, <coughs> and as a subset of X squared, write it down, it's a Borel subset. So every Borel action of a countable group gives a rise to a C bear. And hence, like this uh, sort of traffic from ergodic theory uh, coming, from, yeah, coming from ergodic theory into the theory of C bears. But uh, conversely, it's like an abstract theorem. Basically, it's the losing Novikov uniformization theorem, but uh, written down by Feldman Moore, that uh, every such equivalence relation with countable classes actually arises from a Borel action of a countable. So there is a countable group such that it acts and produces exactly this C pair. So basically, we're, we're, we're studying Borel actions of countable groups, which include measurable actions, of course, after you throw out the null set. OK, so now uh, when uh, let's equip, so my talk is going to be measurable. I'm going to discard null sets throughout. Like in these three lectures, null sets don't exist. So uh, uh, but let's, let's uh, put the measure on x. So. Um, when 
P is measured, meaning that measured, i.e. Uh, X is e equipped with a Borel probability measure, and all my measures are probability measures. Uh, probability measure, mu. We say that <coughs> that E is, I'm gonna do two definitions at once. So uh, measure preserving, measure preserving, uh, respectively, this is the other definition, respectively measure class preserving, If for every uh, Borel automorphism of E, so for every element in this uh, Borel full group, oops, and I'll define what this is. This is the set of all, so all Borel bijections, bijections from X to X, whose graph with graphs subset of E. That means a point X is mapped by this map phi to a point Y and such that X and Y are equivalent. So it basically permutes each class but doesn't mix up the two classes, okay? So every, and we, we call this the Borel full group of E. So every phi that is like this, uh, if for every phi, uh, phi is, so I'm defining measure preserving, so I want to say that the push forward of the measure mu by phi is mu. And to define measure class preserving, I would just say that the, these are, this push forward is in the same measure class. So it's equivalent to mu. Okay, so this is the definition. And uh, this the measure class preserving has a shorter characterization. So um, in fact- So we say equivalent, we have same, same null sets. Same null sets, yeah. In fact, uh, this, uh, so uh, MCP is equivalent, uh, is equivalent to saying that the saturation, the E saturation of every null set is null. The E saturation, uh, well, let's create a notation, which is just equal to uh, the union of all. <coughs> I rarely write an uncountable union, but as a logician, but this is, uh, I guess I do it now. Uh, the E saturation of each null set, null set, Z is null. Okay, so uh, th this is the type of C bears that we're going to be concerned with. And um, it turns out that there's this uh, sort of, um, intuition that measure class preserving sort of means that all points in the same class have equal weight. Uh, sorry, measure preserving means that all points in the same class have equal weight. And measure class preserving sort of means that maybe they have different weight. It's all positive, it's different weights, uh, it, but, it's, but the, the weights are different. And well, this is of course nonsensical because every single point probably has measure zero. So what do I mean by different weights? I mean that there is a notion of relative weights between two points, like the point X is heavier than the point Y by this much. And this, the, this actually, this intuition is made precise uh, by a tiny bit of the theory, namely this theorem that I just mentioned, Feldman Moore, for instance. Uh, so every <coughs> MCP, so measure class preserving C bears so many abbreviations E, um, admits a unique Borel function that means a uh, unique uh, up to null sets. Borel uh, function. So it's a function from, uh, I denoted by W because uh, those co-authors with which I denoted by W are here and the one that I didn't is not here right now. Uh, so it's a, it's a map W uh, from E as a set of pairs. 
two positive reals um, a Borel function. Uh, so this is called, uh, oh, okay, so the way I think of this Borel function is it takes two points that are in the same E class and spits out a real number, which I'm gonna denote uh, this, this funny way, I mean, this, this way, which I, in my mind, read as uh, the weight of, sort of weight of X relative to Y, so divided by the weight of Y. Uh, so this part is nonsense, but it helps. Uh, so it, uh, function this, uh, called the radon nicotine cycle, called the radon nicotine. Cycle, uh, I guess of E with respect to mu, with respect to mu. Um, so Borel function, what? Uh, that, um, that, uh, so I guess condition one is a co-cycle, first of all. What does this mean? This means uh, what we expect this condition to say like if I multiply this by the weight of y divided by the weight of z, then the weight of y is cancelled and we get weight of x divided by weight of z. So that's the cocycle identity. So uh, so the, this is to say that if you multiply weight of y relative to z with weight of z, sorry, weight of y relative to x with the weight of z relative to y, this is going to be equal to the <coughs> weight of z relative to x. And you can get this by canceling out, like I can write, <coughs> or like IE weight of x divided by blah, 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 y times blah, 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 y over blah, 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 z. And then these two things cancel, and you get, you get weight of x divided by weight of z. So, OK. Uh, this is the co-cycle identity, and then second, it satisfies the mass uh, satisfies the mass transport principle. Um, and could it just uh, set the x and y uh, between the two two lines? Uh, These two lines? Yes. Uh, well, no. This is equal to like you know. This is the map from y x to y x is taken to. This is the value at y comma x. You just swap the y and the x in both spots. I, oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Wow. Someone got this. I'm glad someone was paying. Thank you very much. So, okay. Um, no. All right. Yes, I understand. This is y. This is x. Then this is, I guess, uh, something else cancel, I guess. This is y and this is z and we get z here, x there. I knew I shouldn't write this type of things. Okay, so is it correct now? I guess, yeah? Okay, thanks. So, okay, and um, uh, and uh, it, it satisfies the mass transport principle. It uh, satisfies the uh, mass transport principle. So what this is, is we turn the term we at least stole from uh, percolation theory. Uh, they call it, in the, with the presence of a co-cycle, they call it tilted mass transport principle, but whatever. So uh, it says that for any bounded Borel function, uh, actually, no, for any positive Borel function, so non-negative Borel function, for any f from, from the space x to the reals, <coughs> extended reals, we have, uh, maybe I'll write on the next page. So we have the following integrals, are, the two integrals are equal. Um, you take for every point, so d mu x with respect to x. For x, we look at the, so we think of this function, oh, this function was also on e, sorry. Uh, it again, like takes equivalent pairs. So you think of, um, the x giving a um, um, fraction of its mass to the other points in its class. So it gives some you know, yeah, mass to, 
to its friends in the same equivalence class. That's like f of x comma y, where y varies over the class. So I want to say the outgoing mass, total outgoing mass, and I'm taking the expectation of it. So I'm going to write y inside the class of x. And I'm going to say the total fraction of the outgoing mass from x. So I want to write it here, how I think of this. This is the uh, out going mass from x from x relative to x uh, relative to x so like you know each point uh, if if we want if we want to think of not relative masses but like to total you think of mass of x as 1 kilogram and then everything else is in terms of kilograms now and then uh, if like this has to be equal to the incoming mass uh, from other points to x. Uh, so this is with averages. So this is again y going from, from the class of x. But now, so I want y, f y comma x. So it comes from y. But we know that I think of this f as the fraction of the mass of y. So like if f says one half, that means half of the mass of y is coming to x, which means if I'm going to represent this in terms of x, I need to you know, switch, I need, uh, we need to make this in terms of the mass of x, uh, uh, mass of y relative to x. So I multiply with this relativization uh, number. Okay, so weight. So this is a weighted uh, incoming mass. So this is the incoming mass. Mass uh, 2x, again, in terms of x. Rel oops, relative to x. Okay, so this is the, uh, the mass transport principle. And uh, maybe I can copy paste an exercise here. Uh, for those who want to work things out afterwards. Okay, so uh, here's an exercise. Uh, so this, so uh, firstly, uh, how to compute this this cycle, this uh, um, uh, w function, uh, this weight function. So you can show that two is equivalent uh, to what I wrote as two, two prime. Which gives you a way to compute the radon this radon cos cycle in terms of radon nickname derivatives. What you do is for every phi, like that is phi is this Borel permutation. So for every Borel permutation of your classes, you can <coughs> push forward measure, or the star is in the wrong place. Um, you can take the push forward measure of phi and divide it by the underlying measure. So this radon nicotine derivative at x should be equal to precisely the radon nicotine co-cycle, like relative to x of the mass of inverse of x. Okay, so this is, this is how one computes, this is how one verifies that this w is the right function. At least that's how I do it. And then E is PMP, meaning I didn't abbreviate this up there, uh, I should. So like we call this PMP for probability measure preserving. Uh, and then this is MCP, CP. Okay, so if E is PMP, uh, if E is PMP if and only if the, uh, this cos cycle is one, so all points have equal weight, okay? So this is exercise one. Okay, so uh, this is uh, right now what I want to say about the measure class preserving C bears, and I wanna move on to defining the next term uh, in the logical sense, which is treeability. Um, any questions so far about this part? You uh, was just a fixed matter, right? There fixed was no matter. relations. No relations. Yeah, the relation is in the assumption of this measure class preserving. Okay. Like if you assume E is measure class preserving, then there exists this unique function, unique up to mu null set function and it's it's with this measure uh, I forgot to write the integral here I guess d mu x again so it's these integrals are with this measure 
And it's sort of this function, so the mu is not invariant, like the automorphism of the equivalence relation moves it to a different measure, but it moves it to an equivalent measure. And this function corrects the non-invariance. Like there is an error, you know, one turns into two and it sort of corrects it. So it multiplies it into one half and corrects it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, let's move on to treatable equivalence relations. Bears. Okay, um, so first of all, I mean, to define treatability, one needs to understand what the graphing is. Uh, and so there, yeah, so let me just define the graphing first. So uh, graphing, of uh, countable Borel equivalence relation E um, is a Borel, Borel graph G, um, Borel in the sense that, uh, so on X, so IE, it's a G is a Borel subset of X squared. So I think of uh, in descriptive set theory, we identify the name graph G, with its set of edges, unlike in graph theory, where those are different things. So uh, IE, this is a Borel symmetric set. So I want my graphs to be undirected. I take a symmetric uh, relation. OK, so uh, G is a Borel symmetric set, such that, such that the G components, G connected components, Uh, I guess maybe I should write connected components are exactly the E classes. Uh, in other words, uh, so I just want the notation, uh, i.e. the connectedness equivalence relation induced by G um, equivalence relation E G of G is exactly E. Okay, so this is what the graphing is. And so how do you produce graphings for C bears? So as I told you, every C bear arises from a group action. And so let's see how the group action can give you a graphing. So um, this example, but really these are all examples. Example, um, I don't know what happened. Okay, so uh, let uh, gamma act on X. So let E be the orbit equivalence relation. Orbit uh, equivalence relation of a Borel action of a countable uh, group gamma on X and let gamma be generated by some symmetric set S. S is symmetric. Uh, the Schreier graph of this section, the, uh, uh, with respect to this symmetric set, the Schreier uh, graph G sub S of Oh yeah, I wanted this to be blue so that it catches eye. Uh, of, so it's rather a GS of uh, this action with respect to S is the graph on G, on, on X, graph on X defined by so I put two edges, I put an edge between X and Y. Uh, if and only if uh, there is a generator that maps X to Y. So S times <coughs> Y for some generator. Okay, so it, this is like Cayley graph. Uh, Cayley graph for the left action of the so like a Schreier graph for the left action of group on itself is precisely the Cayley graph. Uh, so 
in particular, I'll write it here in particular. Uh, oh, yeah, I should say that, yeah, so the, clearly, this is a graphing, <laughs> clearly, GS is a graphing of E. It connects up the E classes because E classes are the orbits. And of course, if you move by generators, you can connect, you, you're going to connect any two points in the same orbit. Um, graphing of E. And if the action is free, is free, then each uh, component is a copy of the Cayley graph exactly. Of the Cayley graph. graph of gamma with respect to the same generator set. OK, so now what are treatable equivalence relations? So a C bear is called treatable. Uh, is treatable if, ah, uh, damn it. Uh, so if it admits an acyclic graphing, so each connected component is a tree. Graphing uh, called a tree. Okay, so for example, um, again, every three board election. Oh, I do think I left the space here. Uh, I say, like, if mu is a Borel probability measure. <coughs> Well, okay, if mu is a Borel probability measure on X, then we call, then E is called mu treeable. And that's the main concept I'm gonna use. I don't care in these talks about Borel treeability. Uh, is mu treeable if it is treeable after throwing out treeable after uh, throwing out an E invariant null set. Uh, e invariant, yeah, Borel null set. Why not? So I'm mainly going to be concerned with whatever notion I defined. I'm going to be concerned with new that notion. So up, up to null sets. So now an example of genuinely Borel treeable uh, C bears is that every free Borel action action of uh, the free group F n on n generators on n. Less than or equal to omega. It's so nice to be at a logic conference uh, 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 on um, and generators. There's uh, 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 every Borel election um, induces induces a treeable C bear. In fact. The standard Schreier graph, meaning the standard the with res, the Schreier graph with respect to the standard generating set for the free group, standard uh, Schreier graph graph is a tree of uh, is a tree. Okay. Um, all right, so, uh, and then one line as to like, so C bear, the treeable C bears form a, a small in, on one hand, but rich on the other hand, subclass of all C bears. Uh, and, you know, it's sort of simplest, a bit complicated subclass. Uh, and so that we like to study it. Uh, and so to uh, sort of moral image, <laughs> thought about these things, a moral image in mind should be that, um, Treeable C bears among all C bears 
participants play the same role role among all sea bears. as three groups like this example shows, so the three groups among all count of uh, groups. Okay, uh, so this is the class of sea bears. Again, like, you know, I, I recommend to study it, but I don't wanna spend more time on this. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to defining the next notion, which is amenability for sea bears. Uh, uh, also, in my context, equivalent to hyperfiniteness. So I'll, I'll define both notions at the same time. Finite flesh amenable forgot to say any questions uh, about three of the bears. Yeah. Uh, as I said, equally painful for both. So, uh, what what are these? So, a sea bear is called hyperfinite. That one is a bit easier to define. The sea bear E is hyperfinite. Uh, some people stress boral hyperfinite if they have worked on it. Uh, so, boral hyperfinite. If um, it is an increasing union increasing union of uh, finite sea bears. You can guess what finite sea bears are based on countable sea, like uh, C, so like F bears, where uh, e, e n is a finite boral electronics relation. Uh, which means that each class is finite. So these are sort of the most basic still interest, still infinite equivalence relations that we can consider. Uh, and in a lot of ways, they behave like finite equivalence relations and in a lot of ways they don't. Uh, so, and again, I will call it mu hyperfinite. So E is mu hyperfinite. Uh, mu is this probability measure that is in my mind. So mu hyperfinite, finite, if, it is so on, it is hyperfinite, hyperfinite, and the same thing on um, E invariant uh, Borel conal set. Okay, so I'll be concerned with this. Okay, so uh, which equivalence relations are hyperfinite? Well, there is this very nice characterization. So fact uh, by, uh, I guess, the NG Weiss for in the measure context and then Slayman still in the Borel context. Uh, I'm saying for fact because it's not so hard to prove with the current sort of understanding. Uh, that um, a sea bear is hyperfinite. Hyperfinite. But only if it is induced by uh, a boral action. Action of Z. Okay, so uh, in particular, hyperfinite sea bears are treeable, in fact, lineable, if you want, because Z is a line and the Schreier graph would be a line. Yeah, so in particular, hyperfinite implies treeable. Okay. Uh, now, a related notion that I want to define, and then turns out these are these two are equivalent in the measure context, is amenability. Uh, so a sea bear is called amenable. So a measured sea bear, uh, sea bear E on a probability, the standard probability space X mu, is uh, called <coughs> is mu amenable. We don't have another sort of 
Well, I don't want to define other notions, the Borel notion, uh, is mu amenable if, um, so amenable groups are which ones? Those are those groups that admit a finitely additive invariant measure on the group that measures all the subsets of all subsets of the group. Like Z is amenable, but it's not, you need an alpha filter to construct the, that measure, okay? So I want to define the same thing from groups to equivalence relations. So it's again, I'm going to require now each class to have an finitely additive invariant measure. So if there is an assignment, there is a new measurable, I'm gonna write in quotes so that then I, uh, I make it precise. Assignment um, to assignment uh, C mapping to M C or uh, let's do it this way new measurable uh, X mapping to X assignment uh, sorry assignments this um, of a finitely edited. Um, Borel, not Borel, finitely additive probability measure on the class of X. X is a point in the space, so X is the point in the space. Uh, okay, so, so to each point, we assign a probability measure that is finitely edited, and it measures all subsets of the E class of X. And I want this assignment to be E invariant. Uh, that is E invariant. I guess I should have said E invariant assignment. Oh, well. OK, so I want different points in the same class to still be mapped to the same measure. So that's where the invariant, invariance comes. And what does mu measurable mean? I mean. You know, if, if I don't put anything, then this definition would be stupid. Like every every C pair would be amenable, uh, meaning, meaning that you can just cook up by hand some maximum of choice assignment of this such measures. But mu measurable means that so uh, mu measurable uh, means that for any Borel set, uh, Borel set B. Uh, the map, the map uh, from X to reals uh, by taking X to the measure of this Borel set is uh, mu measurable. That's what it means. So for every Borel <coughs> set, you get get, uh, get this measurable map. Okay, so this is the class of amenable C bears. And uh, well, you know that, you know, in, in say uh, union of uh, finite groups is amenable. Uh, so the same way hyperfinite equivalence relations are uh, amenable, but turns out that if you drop a null set, the converse is also true. And this is the theorem of uh, Kohn-Feldman. That says that uh, mu hyperfinite equals mu amenable. Okay, so in particular, um, oh, I should have should have put something then stated this. So uh, okay, we'll, we'll postpone it uh, for a second. Uh, so I'll, I'll put it as an exercise here. Uh, not contact advice as an exercise. Uh, so uh, this is an exercise and I'll read it. So uh, what's the exercise? Uh, it fit here. Okay, so the exercise is this, that um, C bears induced by Borel actions of amenable groups are mu amenable. Like if I give you a minimal group, you will be able to copy the invariant finitely additive probability measure from the group onto each orbit. Uh, and I mean, 
sort of to copy, you need to choose a point. But it, it turns out that picking any point will result in the same measure by the invariance of the measure on the group. Uh, and then conversely, in the PMP setting, where the points have the points in the same class have equal mass, uh, it is possible to translate like if you had if if the action induced an amenable C bear. So let's say you have a free PMP action of a group gamma. That in, so it's free, so that we can fully see the power of gamma. And it's PMP, so all points have equal weight in the same orbit. So if, uh, so if, the, if you have such an action, and this action induces the, the, the orbit equivalence relation all of a sudden is mu amenable, then using this mu and averaging out the mu x mxs from all classes, you can actually prove that gamma is amenable. You can build a finitely additive uh, probability measure on gamma, but for that you need this mu to be invariant. Uh, so, so, so that's why it's still, it holds in the PMP setting. So, okay, let me cut this um, uh, out again because I need to also state one more thing. So, this so caution, and it's the main reason for this lecture series. So, caution. Part B is false in the B is false outside of PMP. For example, there are actions of free group uh, that are free, but uh, the uh, but uh, and, and the, the equivalence relation turns out to be amenable, but the uh, free group is okay. And then finally, can I ask something? Yeah. So for the first part of the exercise. Mm -hmm. Are there some issues with measurability? I mean, if you just, is it trivial or it actually requires something? Um, the Borel action of a countable group? Yeah, well, you have to transfer the means from the minimum group, but then there is some measurability considerations. Or maybe not. I don't think so. I think the like that integral would, I mean, because you have a fixed, you, you already have this fixed measure on the group. Uh, and it's, the group is countable. So the, you know, the, you're using the same measure for all classes. So I don't think there's a measurability issue. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, all right, so this is false outside of PMP setting. And finally, now it makes sense to state the theorem of both von Feldman and Weiss that turns out that mu amenability is the same as hyperfiniteness. And in particular, as a corollary, you get the uh, result of Ornstein Weiss that if you have a free action of an amenable group, it produces a mu hyperfinite equivalence relation, which then can be produced by a Z action. So as far as measure is concerned and actions are concerned, Z and all amenable groups are the same. Like the, this theory doesn't distinguish <coughs> between Z and all uh, amenable groups. For us, they're all the same. So this theory is measured group theory. So when you could study groups from the point of measure actions, uh, those two like groups, amenable groups are the same as Z. Okay, so um, now having done this, let me introduce. Uh, so I, what I want to do is uh, we want I want to characterize. Uh, so we, we saw that um, amenable equivalence relations are treeable. Uh, I want to characterize them among all treeable ones. So I want to look at the tree and say that this is amenable or this is not amenable. That's what I want to do. So. Um, uh, let me now make a disclaimer. So we will exclusively be working in the measure context. We will uh, be working in the measure context. Context, uh, ignoring null sets. So uh, we use, so for us, for us, hyperfinite is the same as amenable. And I will only be using the term amenable. Okay, so now let's talk about ends of graphs because uh, it turns out that the, to characterize um, which treeable things, which treeable equivalence relations are amenable, I need to look at the geometry of the trees. So, ends. 
of graphs. And I, I, I only added this section in the very end that I realized that maybe not everyone knows ends of graphs. Uh, so you got to do it. Okay, so let uh, G now be a connected graph for, for a second. It will stop being connected very soon. Uh, so G be a connected graph on a vertex set. Set X um, or V. So that you think of V as like one connected component of the big thing X later on. Okay, so then uh, here are some a bunch of definitions. Uh, so a G, I'm going to define the space of ends without mentioning the word ultra filter. So uh, wish me luck or yeah, or not. So let um, uh, a, a G ray. Uh, G ray is uh, uh, an infinite, an infinite simple G path, like an infinite sequence, like Xn uh, or Vn, I guess, for vertices, uh, Vn, uh, and uh, we denote we denote the set. Uh, G rays by by uh, rays G. Okay. Um, so for a set for a, a set of vertices U of vertices a side of U side of U is a connected component of uh, the graph G after removing this set of vertices uh, obtained from obtained from G by removing. So like if this is your U, And then you have this type of sort of graph. Uh, this is G. Uh, this is a side. So uh, crazy color. This is one side. Side of you. Okay. Uh, okay. So now let, we can define uh, ends. So let this denote the end equivalence relation. the so-called end equivalence relation on the set of rays, i.e. Uh, what it is, is uh, you set two rays equivalent. So the rays xn, the ray xn is equivalent to the ray yn if, uh, if Eventually, they are on the same side of each finite set of vertices U. If for each finite for each finite uh, set of vertices set U of vertices uh, x n and y n are eventually. on the same side, I guess in technically said, theoretically speaking, but the English doesn't work that way, on the same side of U. So if you have two rays here, like uh, something like this, and then another one coming from here, going this way, and this one is going that way, uh, these two purple and red are eventually on the same side of U. And this is for every U. So no matter how much finite portion of the graph you eat, these two guys are going to go to the same place, uh, to the same side of the finite proportions. Okay, so um, this is the equivalence relation. Uh, maybe I'll put a picture here. I had something like that. So this is a, 
uh, two inequivalent rays, and then I'll draw also the equivalent ones. Okay, so these uh, X and Y, these rays are not equivalent because this U is finite, you separate and they go different places. And whereas this other one is uh, R equivalent, because no matter in, in a grid, uh, so in a grid, no matter what finite portion you eat, everyone is gonna, every ray is gonna eventually be in the same connected component because after removing the finite thing, uh, you have only one infinite connected component, okay? So, uh, and then finally you would call, the classes of this relation are called ends. The, an end of G, an end of G is just the tilde equivalence class. Uh, we denote the, of the space events and uh, by uh, delta uh, delta v, I guess v is our vertex set sub g. So this is just a set of rays that divided uh, the, the portion space by this end equivalence relation. Okay. Uh, so, so then in this picture, you can see this has two ends, this end and that end, and this is one ended. All right, so uh, finally, I want to talk about this end compactification uh, in general. So let for, uh, for a side S of a finite set U, Um, I want to talk about it's like the ends that end up in this side. So let S closure, and this will make sense topologically later. So the closure of S, uh, I want this to think, I uh, know not closure, sorry, maybe I just want this. I want this notation uh, to be the all uh, ends whose representative rays Representative rays uh, are eventually in S. Uh, so we we take and uh, so and uh, call S closure, which is S <laughs> together with the ends that uh, end up on this side. Uh, call this. I wanted this in blue, sorry. So I'll call this an, an extended side of U because it's the, the side together with its extension to the ends. Extended side of, of S, sorry. Oh yeah, of, of, of U. Okay, so now uh, I want to define the new space and the topology on it. So let V closure G be the space of like the, the so-called end compactification, even though it may not be a compact space if your graph is not locally finite, it won't be a compact space if your graph is not locally finite. So this is um, uh, to V together with the end ends, uh, be equipped with a topology, the topology generated by generated by, uh, uh, so the singleton vertices, the sing vertex singletons. So I want this topology to be discrete on the set of vertices uh, and uh, extended sides of finite vertex sets. Extended sides of finite vertex sets. So these guys, these guys turn into, oops, these guys turn into open sets. So this topology is easily seen to be zero dimensional. This is zero dimensional. And when uh, G is locally countable, it's, uh, the topology is Polish. Okay, so it's a nice Polish space, yeah. Sorry, what's 
Sorry? What's a side? Side, okay. Uh, a side is when you remove a finite set, okay. the connected components are called sides. It's just a convenient language. And then extended side is like the side together with all the ends that end up there. Whatever Todor said, I don't buy it. Okay, so uh, okay, so then when G is not connected, isn't uh, connected, uh, all the above notions actually make sense. You can check all the above notions. Above notions make sense, but uh, but the topology topology on V is no longer nice. Longer, uh, it's sort of a it's a disjoint union of the the spaces obtained from each connected component <coughs> in some humongous topological space. But we never think of it all, uh, all together. We always only think of this topology when restricted to each connected component. So we're okay. All right. Now with this all said, uh, having said all this, now I'm ready to um, characterize all the uh, trings that are amenable. So uh, the character, uh, so Adam's dichotomy, Adam's dichotomy uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, for PMP in the measure preserving setting. Uh, okay, so uh, we call uh, Borel graph G uh, amenable three, uh, so I'm amenable uh, if, if uh, such is its connectedness relation. So uh, here we give uh, characterize all strings that are available in the PMP context. So the theorem is. Um, Theorem due to Adams is that uh, 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 PMP PMP treeing is amenable if and only if it has uh, at most two ends in every component. And uh, this is called dichotomy because uh, you can also say a tree is non amenable if and only if it has a perfectly many ends. So it's a, there is a stronger statement, and not just this. So, okay, so I will uh, next lecture mention how to prove this, and you can prove this using cost, for example. But uh, so cost is not useful in the outside of the PMP. Maybe I should emphasize that this is for PMP. Okay, so cost, cost is not so useful outside of PMP. Um, and uh, so I, I'll just, uh, I guess, end by saying this fails for uh, outside of PMP. This fails uh, outside of PMP, e.g. the boundary actions, boundary action, action of say F2 uh, on its boundary, which I'll define next time, but for those who know, um, is uh, free on a co-countable set. So uh, admits, admits uh, for regular training with perfect set of ends, uh, yet, um, um, yet, 
uh, and and free group and and the free group is non-amenable, but yet uh, the equivalence relation, the orbit equivalence relation, is in fact hyperfinite. Is amenable. So this is the example uh, which it fails. So then in the next lecture, I will uh, describe that this dichotomy can be saved. That it will be of the form uh, a, a, a measure class preserving tree is amenable if and only if each connected component has less than or equal to two ends such that blah, blah, blah. And this blah, blah, blah is gonna be given with the red or nicotine co-cycle. And that's why the title of the lectures is that is geography as opposed to geometry, that it's not enough to just look at the geometry of the tree, but you have to look at the heights of what's going on. And then it turns out that those ends that are high, there are only two of them, at most two of them. Okay, all right, then I'll end here, thanks. Sorry, I, 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 I screwed up something, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. Would you share this file which you just created? Yeah, yeah, that was the point of me not giving a Blackboard talk so that I can immediately uh, share the file, yeah. I, I, I'll send it to you, Marcek. This file, can you share it on the web website? Yes, sure. Questions. Now, um, so uh, concerning the speakers for today, and also in the afternoon and and, and uh, uh, during the next days, uh, it turns out that there is no USB port here in this tablet. So please either. You can use your computer and connect via Zoom, present slides, or you can send PDF file to the conference uh, email address, and then we are on the computer. So wait, there's concerns to the speakers.